can't imagine how long I already wanted to do this. Why did nobody else ever make Fuyara playing tutorials for YouTube? <laughs> Maybe because there's almost no Fuyara players. But for the ones who already play Fuyara or the ones who want to learn, now is the time. So this is the last Fuyara I made. The people who already follow me on Instagram could see me make this one in my Insta story at Mesmerizing Sounds. So I've made this instrument completely by hand. It's a natural shaped hand drilled concert Fuyara. And this is the standard quality all my customers receive. The branch I used for this one was very crooked, as you can see. It has a very wild shape, but I really like it because this way each instrument gets its own character in voice and also in form. So very quickly, the basics again. Here's the mouthpiece. So it has a shape like this. So this is inserted this way into the air pipe. So the air is pushed up towards uh, the fipple. Just push it in firmly. And when you play, make sure you don't feel any air escape on your lips, then it's not tight enough. So for the Fuyara, this is the flute and this is the air pipe. So the air travels through the air pipe, through a wooden plug, into a sound chamber and then down into the windway where the wind breaks on the fiddle and this makes the sound. So how do you hold your Fuyara correctly? So basically the Fuyara is held by two fingers, your thumb and your index finger. And you hold the Fuyara about five centimeters above the first playing hole. Then you tilt the Fuyara forwards and you let the bottom of the Fuyara rest against the outside of your leg. This requires a bit of balancing and it's very uncomfortable in the beginning and it will feel very weird, but you'll get used to it when you practice this enough. The whole instrument is held by your thumb and index finger and is leaning forwards. This way you still have your middle finger free to open and close the top hole on your Fuyara. The next step is to close the middle hole and the bottom hole. And this is even more weird because for the middle hole you use your thumb and then the bottom hole is closed by your middle finger or your ring finger, like this. In my experience I found out that uh, the tricky part is the thumb for a lot of people. So you have to try to close the middle hole with the part just in front of the first joint of your thumb. So I'll try to show you. So you can see this imprint here. This is where you have to close the middle hole. It's very important to try not to keep your arm like this, but to keep it relaxed uh, beside you. So don't do this. So in the beginning you will get pain in this arm, in your shoulder, in your wrists, and this is quite normal. If you stick with it, it will just disappear in a couple of weeks when you learn to relax in this awkward position. So if you don't want to go through this phase or just simply don't have the physical abilities, you can use a saxophone neck strap with a piece of leather attached to it. So this is just a regular saxophone neck strap and I've attached a piece of leather to it with a little loop uh, at the end. So I just made an incision and put the other end through and this way you get a loop. I mostly use it to play very big fuyaras and I just simply put it in between the playing holes. And then again you let it rest against the outside of your leg and then you have no weight uh, to carry. So the first exercise you can do is try to close all the holes and play the fundamental note. Try to play it as long as possible without hearing any squeaky sounds. When you hear this... This means one of the holes is not closed and most likely it will be your thumb hole. So then adjust and try to get the nice warm uh, deep tone. I call it the fundamental, but actually this is already the first octave. So the real fundamental on the Fuyara is really low and very silent because the bore of Fuyara is very narrow for its length to be able to have the high reach in the overtones. So the first uh, notes are actually not used or you can use them when you use uh, amplification. So when I play the real fundamental and the first notes, So as you can hear, they're very weak and very silent and almost not audible when you don't use uh, amplification. So first exercise, the ground note, which is the first octave. And then try to breathe in between and still hit the same note. Then the next step is to overblow this ground note into the overtones. So you keep all the holes closed. Uh, 
And the way to do this is to think T and try to breathe in between each note so you can increase the pressure of the inblown air gradually. If you don't think T but just breathe into the instrument like more like a H, you will have no control over the pressure and you won't be able to hit the notes. And this is like when you would blow into the instrument with open lungs. So when I do this... You hear I have no control whatsoever. So really try to remember that everything happens in your mouth and you really have to articulate or think T and control the air this way. So your chest and your lungs can be very lazy. There should be no pressure here. All the pressure should be happening in your mouth or throat cavity. So now I'm just saying t -t 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 -t. So this is the whole technique to go up and down the overtone scale. So try with me. It's very normal in the beginning that the flute won't do what you want it to do and it will jump on you or, or drop down. And this is perfectly normal, try not to be frustrated with it. Just try to practice this graduate uh, ascending and descending as good as you can. Almost like you would go up and down a staircase. And if you're fed up with it, just try to randomly blow into the instrument and increase and decrease the pressure, thinking T and let the instrument just react on you, so you can intuitively get a feeling for how the instrument reacts. So just blow randomly and just like get a feeling for the different pressures and the different notes you get from the instrument. Then the next thing you can do is try to open and close the bottom hole while you increase and decrease the pressure and go through the overtones. So you start with the fundamental, all holes closed, then open the bottom hole, then close again, and open again, and close. And like this way you go up and then down. So when you do it step by step, So again, this will be quite difficult in the beginning. So then try to do the same as with all holes closed. Just open and close it randomly and just increase and decrease the air pressure to see where the instrument uh, takes you. So you can switch between these two, between the random opening and closing and then the more graduate step-by-step -step ascending and descending because this first uh, one will be more frustrating. So when you just start playing, another nice thing to do is to play the traditional Slovakian scatter. And to do this you basically just play as hard as you can using the T saying ta 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 and decrease the air pressure while you close all the holes. So again close all the holes. Make some pressure in your muscles in your midsection and just blow as hard as you can saying ta 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 and then decrease the air pressure as you do it. So again everything is basically happening in my mouth besides some pressure in the muscles in my midsection. For the rest, my lungs are completely relaxed. When I try to do this by saying H or by breathing into the instrument, it will sound like this. It's more like, <coughs> like you're coughing inside of the instrument. And this way, again, you don't have any control and the instrument sounds quite dull. But when you use the T, you can really pick your notes um, when you get more advanced. So I suggest you start practicing these basic things and we will go from there in the next tutorial where I'll show you how to play a very simple melody just by using the bottom hole of your fuyara. So if you have any questions on this session or suggestions for the next videos just put them in the comment section below and I'll be very happy to read them. If this was of any value to you and you want to support me making more free 
uh, tutorials and other videos, you can do so by supporting me on my new Patreon page. I'll also put a link uh, below. So I guess this was it for today, so see you next time. So I guess this was it for today, so see you next time.